His grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may be unto you for now and forever. Amen. Sitting down today, not in pain, just being really careful. This time I want it to work. So we're, we're coming along. Uh, we've been working through these last number of, of weeks talking about healthy relationships and building healthy relationships and building healthy biblical relationships. We've talked about the, who the problem is. The problem is us. We've talked about uh, marriage. We've talked about friendships. We've, we've talked about all kinds of things. Today, I want to talk about relationship trash because it happens everywhere. It just kind of builds itself up. And when we fail to work with it and understand where it's coming from, and how God calls us to heal it, we just, we all experience, first, less than what God's called us to, and secondly, our witness is limited. Because people look at us as Christians and they say, you're no different. Friends, we are different. We have the light of Christ's love. And, and we are called to not just a different kind of life, but a higher kind of life. And God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, gives us the possibility of doing it as he works in us. Now, now when, I, when I'm talking about relationship trash, let me give you another image so that you can th think about it. And that's the, the, the image of the check light engine, check engine light. There was a point in my life where I had eight kids and nine cars. The youngest one was about 70,000 miles, and the rest worked themselves up to 300,000 miles. Lots of repairs, and everybody always had a check engine light, right? One time, somebody had to have the check engine light on. Uh, the, the worst one was, was this old Dodge pickup truck we had. Uh, it would have the check engine light on if you didn't tighten the gas cap or if you tightened it too much, and it was just constantly on. Now, here's the problem with it being constantly on. You have no idea if there's a problem. Finally, in the end, what I did is I took a Band-Aid and just stuck it over the light. And I said, about once a month, I'm going to stop by someplace and have them tell me the numbers. And if it's numbers that I knew, then it was okay. If it was numbers I didn't know, then I had to have somebody check it out. But I lived with that check engine light on constantly. A lot of us in our relationships live with check engine lights on and we ignore them or check relationship on and we ignore them. And what happens is the junk of a relationship builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up so that we run into this problem. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all kinds of evil behavior. That, that what happens is, because we don't deal with it, our bitterness turns into rage, anger, and harsh words. Because we don't deal with things at this level, we deal with them at this level. And let me give you an example of, of, of Jesus. In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus asks Peter three times, do you love me? Now, this is a story from after the resurrection. What happened right before the resurrection? What happened before Jesus went to the cross? What happened to the Peter who said, I will do anything, even give my life rather than fall away from faith. And Jesus says, okay, you think that before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times, right? And Peter did it. And the rooster crowed. 
and his heart's broken. It's broken so much, I don't know if he, where he was while John was standing at the foot of the cross with Mary, his mother, where Peter was, was he ashamed? Was he afraid? Jesus came that Easter night and said, first, peace be with you. I wonder what the ten disciples that were there, because Judas was gone and Thomas wasn't there, what the ten disciples were talking about right before Jesus came in. Peace be with you. Were they as angry and frustrated and riotous as the folks down in Chicago the other night? Just acting crazy like, you did this, no, you did this. And, and talking about what speech is protected you know, free speech is protected, but not hate speech. And I'm going to tell you, you're doing hate speech. Oh, no, you're doing hate speech. What, was that what was going on back and forth? Can't you imagine it? And Jesus coming in and saying, peace be with you. And then he goes, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they're forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they're not forgiven. Thomas came later on. Everyone was feeling a little superior to him because he hadn't been there. And Thomas starts in, unless I put my fingers in the nail marks or see the mark in the side, I won't believe. And Jesus comes back for him. And then Jesus shows up again with the, at the end with, with trying to continue to restore these disciples by, by telling them, Throw the net over on the other side. And finally, with that miraculous catch of fish and feeding them, and Peter recognizing it's the Lord, we get to the, uh, the quiet moment. And the quiet moment of, Peter, do you love me? Well, yeah, of course I do. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me more than these? Yeah! Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? And it says in our scripture verse, Peter was hurt that Jesus asked again. Stupid Peter, right? What was Jesus doing? For every time that Peter denied... He was giving Peter a chance to say, I love you. And then Jesus looks at Peter and says, okay, when you were young, you did things your way. Now that you're older, you're going to have people dress you and take you where you don't want to go. You're going to do things my way. Come follow me. And I would just encourage you in these next couple of minutes to open your heart to following Jesus and dealing with the relationship trash that has built up, the check engine light which has built up between you and others, and let it be done. Rid yourself of bitterness, anger, rage, slang, slander, hateful actions. Rid yourself of fear. You know, you, you know that there's a relationship trash that's built up. When you're going through the grocery store and you see somebody and you turn around and go down another aisle. How many of us have ever done that? Okay, the rest of you aren't, don't shop. <laughs> because you say, oh, I don't want to talk with them. Oh, I'm so tired of that. They're going to have me here for 10 minutes. I've got things I've got to do that are way more important. Or they made that snippy remark, and I'm still mad and hurt. You know, it's, it's funny. Talk about relationship trash. Uh, 
for our, our German student, uh, I'm a Deutsch for Dörbe. You know, I, I, I just, uh, I studied two years in, in, in Germany 40 years ago. Uh, we sing on Christmas Eve, Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, right? And we usually do a, a verse in German. How many of you can still sing in German or think you can? A couple of us? Okay. Because that's a part of our heritage. I'm a sixth generation German American. You know that we are not going to sing that anymore. You know why? Because every time I do, we have Germans with us. And they say, that's not the right words. I said, well, that's the words that we learned. And you know what? Praise God in our last hymnal. If you look with Silent Night, it's, it's got a German version that says, some people in America sing this German version because they come from different parts of Germany. But I got so sick and tired of Germans coming to me on Christmas Eve and telling me I'm wrong. I just said, to heck with it, we're not singing it. Besides, nobody knows how to sing it anyway but me. You know, I started feeling that. that get that feeling? Isn't that nuts? I got relationship trash building up about Christmas Eve. How about you? About who goes where and who says what and who goes first and who offers to have somebody over to their house or don't bring Uncle Fred over because he always fights about politics or he's just all of that stuff. We've got stuff in our lives and we got stuff in our marriages. There's, there's a lot, and for those of us who are not married, You've got other relationships where this mirrors. But for in, in marriages, isn't there a lot of junk that just builds up? And, and, and sometimes when the forks don't go into the exact right spot, our feelings are, well, I guess I'll have to fix this now. Because you never or you always, and if it's not that, it's where the toothpaste goes, or how to bring out the Christmas lights, or what we're going to serve on Easter, or, or the feeling of, you never ask me how my day went anymore. Or you never say, you love me. That stuff just keeps on building up. And we end up existing with one another instead of being healed. So I want to go back to Scripture to talk about, about how to heal and healing these big things. There's a guy named John Gottman, and, and he's studied marriages, and he says there's four horsemen that, that will ruin marriage relationships and other relationships. And the, these four big things, the, the, the first one is, is criticism, when we're always criticizing one another. And we feel that you didn't park straight. How come you did this? We, we had all kinds of criticisms, little ones, that keep on building up within us because not only is there criticism spoken of one another, there is contempt that we have for one another. It, this building of, I'm better than you, and I do it right. For instance, I always park the car exactly the way, way it needs to be parked specifically, and I also sing still a knock, tiling a knock in the right version. You know, we get all those feelings with, within us, superiority. Or, aren't those crazy people on TV? I am so glad the people I'm voting for never act in that way. When in reality, if you just follow them long enough, I think like every candidate has, has said something horrible about other people or things that you wouldn't, wouldn't even begin to think. There's all of this built-up contempt for one another. Then there's defensiveness so that when something, if there's a criticism that's right about us, like I didn't put the right forks in the right spot or I didn't park the car in the right place, I get defensive and I say, well, you never do this. And we always have to feel like we have to un one up one, one another. And, and what happens is a little thing starts, and then all of a sudden it's about something else. And then it's all of a sudden about something else. And then it's all of a sudden, and you never liked my mother. 
you know, or <laughs> however it, 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 it builds up for there. And, and the last thing is stonewalling. And don't we do this? When there's something that we don't want to deal with, we turn up the television or we walk away or this horrible thing. I have couples who come in to me and say, I'd like to deal with this problem with my spouse. They haven't spoken with me in 10 days. We just exist together. Or the only thing we say is, pass the salt. Right? Friends, this is not how our Lord calls us to deal with one another. And when we re recognize from His Word the sins of our hearts and the way that we act, we can start unraveling it and letting the grace and love and forgiveness of God apply to us. In Psalm 51, did you hear those words? Against you and you alone, David wrote, have I sinned. I've done what's evil in your sight. You will be proved right, God, in what you say, and your judgment against me is just, that we recognize our own sin. When we had our confession this morning from, from the book of John, these words come true for all of us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's why when, when you read from Psalm 51, it's a long reading, but it's so impactful. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your way to rebels and they will turn to you. You know who the first rebel I've got to teach God's way to is? Me. Me. God's Word speaks to me. He speaks to me about the relationship trash that I have built up. The ways that I have broken His will and His way. The things I've said and thought about other people. The gossip I've spread. The stories I've told. All these kinds. It's me that he's talking to, me the rebel. And praise God that Jesus loves me just like he loved Peter. And he gives me a chance constantly to return to him and find his grace. See, this is where we're able to get rid of bitterness and anger and rage where we're able to get rid of the, the sin that dwells within us and, and we can start living up to and into the life that God by His Holy Spirit has called us to. Oh, what a powerful thing happens when grace is the ensign over our lives instead of that black flag, the skull and crossbones, which flies over most of us. I mean, think about it. I, I, I've been praying for that 72-year-old uh, knucklehead man. He's a knucklehead. He went out, and here's a protester, who is also a knucklehead. But he just walked over to him and popped him one. I don't know what the protester said you know, that would, would, have, would have done it. But, but he just popped him one. And he gets out and says, and if he ever comes back, I'm going to kill him then. Oh, words like that and feelings like that I've had. How about you? How about you? And I've been praying for that knucklehead of a man even as I've been praying for this knucklehead of a man. See, the truth is, God, God calls us to healing and, and, and healing grace. Now, there's stumbling blocks that we have. And the first stumbling block is being a victim. And it's the easy thing for us to do. It would be easy for Peter to say, 
as a victim. They confronted me, and I wasn't ready for it. I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen next. Of course I had to deny Jesus. It would have been real easy for him to play the victim. Jesus, you abandoned me. I was there fighting, and all of a sudden you're saying, put down your sword. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. We could have gotten out of this. You put me in this. You made me. It's easy for us to play the victim And, and, and what God calls us to is a different kind of understanding where we are no longer the victim, but we're people who either sin or sinned against, because that's really what the truth is. And, and let, me, let me encourage you uh, with an example that I think is pretty common about how the way that we look at things, and if it's sin and not sin, and looking at ourselves first, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. Going back to little kids. I, I, tomorrow morning, I'm going to have, around our house, we'll have two grandchildren. One's two years old, the other one's chasing two years old, okay? There is going to be a point where they're being fed, and there will be a point where the milk will be spilled. In fact, one of them may take the milk and just for fun, right? And we look at that and we say, oh, they're two years old, right? Right? They, they, they don't know it. Of course they know better. And of course they're not being careful. But when your 14-year-old, for the third time in a week, spills milk at dinner, you doing this, you're doing this on purpose. You're not being careful. I told you. I told you again and again. Don't do that, right? We get all of those feelings of anger. A 2-year-old and a 14-year-old with the same issue. What's the difference between how we react It's our heart, isn't it? And when our hearts are filled with grace and love, here's one thing we do. Move the milk away from where it can be spilled. They did not do this to cause you harm or ruin your dinner. They did this because they're kids. Friends, this is where bitterness goes into anger, goes into rage, goes into... And what God calls us to is a stumbling block, the, the first stumbling block of how I'm going to deal with it. In James, what he says is, confess your sins to one another so you may be healed. And we're talking about the healing that God brings to us. So we may be healed healed. And I, we're not talking about just physical healing, like my foot needs to be healed. We're talking about being healed of anger, of grief, being healed of self-righteousness or pride, being healed of victimizing or playing the victim being healed of all the ways that we act. The stumbling block for us is we have to recognize God's grace in our lives and, and stop playing the victim. But there's this second stumbling block, which is, frankly, much harder for us to deal with. And that's the stumbling block of waiting for the other person to act before I act. I will be happy to forgive if she will ask for forgiveness first. I will be happy to be graceful if he will be graceful with the I will and if. Praise God, we have a Lord 
who loves us so dearly comes right from Scripture. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly, me, you. And whenever I'm stuck in this and waiting for someone else to act first, I have to start turning my face to the cross. And I praise God that while I was still being a knucklehead and am still sometimes, Jesus Christ came with his love and forgiveness and his grace for me. Jesus Christ came and shed his blood. Christ came so I might be free from the relationship trash that I've built up in my life. Anybody here been convicted a little bit by this sermon? Don't have to raise your hand. Because all of us gather it. Here's something we can start off with. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, your grace is enough. I thank you that you have come while I'm still stuck in my relationship trash. You've come to heal me. Help me stop my rebellion. Help me recognize my sin. Help me stop acting in anger and hurt and bitterness and rage and help me be the peace. Let me hear your sweet words. Do you love me? Then follow me. And then lead me to follow on. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, let's rise and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. There is so much that our world needs in peace. But maybe today is the day to put that grace on and blessing on your own heart. That old song, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be reconciliation. Let there be an emptying of the trash in my relationships and let it begin with me. Let's sing.